Okay, um again to Miranda Sia, Gina Gina Salakaya, Chaksu Un Militam Yena. Tas my Shri Guruvena Maha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste, sir, is what the day we go to Vani Pachari Nene Rishi Sasunya Vari, Pastyatya Satari Nene. Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Prasindu, Pave the Chapatitanam, Bhavane Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay. Uh, we want to put up one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10, Chapter 31, verse number 9. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I will request Lavanya to do that. Yes, Maharaj, I am doing that. Uh, Guru Maharaj, Chapter 31, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, 10, 31, number 9, verse. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So this is a classic verse that was made popular within our ISKCON movement by Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj. He picked up on this verse and turned it into a bhajan, which became popular, somewhat popular around ISKCON. But this verse is very interesting. It's spoken by the gopis to Krishna. And preceding this verse, the gopis are feeling separation from Krishna. Krishna calls the gopis by his sweet sounding flute. The gopis leave everything, their homes, their children, their husbands, their duties. Immediately, the sweet sounding flute charms their hearts and minds so completely that they cannot but simply run towards Krishna. They come and then Krishna swords a sort of uh, tests them just to, he might say teases them a little bit, but he also tests them to bring out more of their love. And so he somewhat chides them for saying, why have you come here? It's not so good for a young girl to, you know, be in the middle of the night with a someone other than her husband, as many of these gopis were married. And Krishna in various ways tries to dissuade them from going back, to go back, but they don't. They simply continue to increase their loving entreats towards Krishna. Finally, Krishna disappears and the gopis go mad. In that madness, they imitate Krishna's pastimes by taking the parts of different persons within the pastime and acting out the pastimes. They're so absorbed in Krishna that they want to somehow or other express that separation by remembering Krishna, by acting out his pastimes. And then the in the mood of separation, they're looking for Krishna. Krishna entered into the forest. He's gone. They don't know where he went. They don't know why he left. But they follow into the forest and then they start asking questions to the different forest personalities. The trees, 
the creepers, the birds, um, and other living entities in the forest, the animals. No one can give them any answers. It's quite an interesting discussion. Most of it's in the preceding chapter. Now they have uh, gotten to the point where the separation is so intense that they just start speaking about Krishna to Krishna. And we have to remember that the love for the gopis is completely pure. It has nothing of the material tendencies that love in this world has. In this world, the loving relationships are based on personal needs or personal gains. But in the spiritual world, everyone is expressing that love only for the benefit of the beloved, even at the sacrifice of one's own unhappiness. So this is the mood of the gopis. They know Krishna, they know Krishna, what Krishna likes, and they know that they want to please Krishna. And so they are petitioning Krishna in different ways to appear to them and satisfy their desires to serve him. They're serving him now here. This is an interesting verse because here they give a little different indication of their mood of devotion, which is really somewhat relevant for all of us. And we'll read the verse. This particular chapter and all the verses in it has a particular meter to the verses that is very poetic and very charming. Now, those of you who like to chant slokas will find that this particular chapter is so sweet in its chanting that one will become mesmerized just by the beautiful sound of these Sanskrit terms, term, terminologies. So I'll begin this verse. It's, only, it's a song. It's more than just a verse. Tavakatamritam tapta jivanam kavuviritam kamasapaham shravana mangalam srima atatam bhuvigranatiye buridanjana. Translation. Lavanya, would you please scroll down? They're speaking to Krishna, the nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in this material world. These narrations transmitted by learned sages eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon whoever hears them. These narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power. Certainly those who spread the message of Godhead are the most munificent. Mm -hmm. And then the purport given by the disciples of Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. King Prachaparudra recited this verse to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during the Rathayatra festival of Lord Jagannath. While the Lord was resting in the garden, King Prachaparudra humbly entered and began massaging his legs and lotus feet. Then the king, king recited the 21st chapter of the 10th cant of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the songs of the gopis. The Chaitanya Charitamrita relates that when Lord Chaitanya heard this verse, beginning with Tavakatam Ritam, he immediately arose in ecstatic love and embraced King Bhattaparudra. The incident is described in detail in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, Chapter 14, verses 4 through 18. And in his, and in his edition, Srila Prabhupada has given extensive commentary on it. Hmm. 
So here we get a little example of how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became ecstatic in loving devotion when he heard this uh, verse. Lord Chaitanya had participated in the Ratha Yatra festival, dancing and chanting with his devotees in front and in different places around the court of Lord Jagannath. The Lord was engaged in this kirtan for hours and now he's resting. He goes into the garden, the, um, let's see, can't remember the name of that garden. Oh, the, yeah, the, the Valaba, Valaba Gardens. Uh, something Valaba Gardens, which are right near the Jagannath Temple, for those of you who have been there. They remember the, the whole name of the gardens, please speak it. Um, and he was laying down resting after being fatigued from the ecstatic dancing and chanting during the Rathayantra. King Prataparudra tried previously in so many ways to get the association of Lord Chaitanya. He was a king, but he was a great devotee of the Lord, and he had great love for Lord Chaitanya. And he knew Lord Chaitanya was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But as hard as he tried, because of his position as being the king of Puri, the Lord in his role as a sannyasi, forbid association with a worldly person. So the king in no way was able and he tried very hard in different ways to get that association, but he was unable to. And finally, the devotees arranged for the king to meet the Lord in this way. And uh, relieving himself of all his royal garments, he put on some simple cloth. And when the Lord was laying down in the garden, the devotee said, now, is your chance to get his association. And so immediately he came, and as is mentioned here, seeing the Lord laying down, practically asleep, he began massaging his legs and lotus feet. And the Lord just accepted the service and didn't know who was massaging him. The Lord was so tired. No, it's not the Balagandi Gardens. It's another name. <laughs> it's, I think it's Jagannath Balaba Gardens. Yes. Jagannath Balaba Garden, I think it is. Yeah, that's the name. Uh, and the Lord was just in half trance while he was being massaged. And then the king recited this verse. Tavakatam ritam tapta jivanam kavinbe editam kamal sapaham shravana mangalam shrima atatam bhuvigranati te bhuridam jana. The nectar of your words and the descriptions of your activities are the life and soul of those suffering in the material world. Just think of that first line itself. He's talking about Krishna. But he's talking from the position of the gopis. Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of Srimati Radharani's ecstasy for Lord, for Lord Krishna. And therefore, when he hears these words spoken very sweetly by the king, the Lord immediately sits up and says, Who are you? <laughs> And King Prataparuja said, I am simply the humble servant of the servant of your servants. When the Lord heard that, he got up and embraced King Prataparuja and therefore fulfilling all the desires of Prataparuja completely and perfectly, he received the special mercy and association of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what are the gopis saying here? The nectar of your words and descriptions of your activities 
for the life and soul. That means not just the life, but the, but the soul itself, not just our, our ability to breathe, but our existence on the spiritual platform. We're suffering in this material world. Here is the antidote. But this, this antidote also brings about more suffering. This is the, this is the, uh, the difficulty in these particular narrations by the gopis because the narrations of your activities, as it says here, as transmitted by learned sages, eradicate one's sinful reactions and bestow good fortune upon whoever hears them. That's so beautiful. Therefore, anyone who, and again, the gopis go on to say, these narrations are broadcast all over the world and are filled with spiritual power because they're your words, they're your pure activities. Certainly those who spread the message of Godhead are most munificent. So it glorifies those who, who spread the glories of the Lord to others. But here in the, 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 the Gopi's descriptions describing the, the power and the transformative effect of hearing the glories of the Lord and his activities, his words, his activities, there's another thing. It causes more suffering. <laughs> for those who are situated in devotional service. They go deeper into the, their relationship with the Lord. They feel happy hearing about the Lord. They are enlivened in their devotional process of the Lord. But as they continue to hear, what happens is that there is a transformation of consciousness where the desire to associate with the Lord becomes more and more stronger. And in that desire, the mood of separation from Krishna manifests in a very prominent way in the hearts and minds of those devotees. And what does it cause? More suffering. The anxiety or the spiritual anxiety, we must say, we have to qualify that to say, that anxiety, which is spiritual, spiritual anxiety is a very high form of spiritual quality. To be in material anxiety is a very low form. Therefore, when you understand how, what is the relationship between material and spiritual, you understand what's highest and the material world is lowest in the spiritual world. And what's lowest in the spiritual world is highest in the material world. So here, in this, in this sense, what's lowest in the material world is anxiety. But an anxiety for Krishna or to serve the Lord, as the gopis are expressing here in this particular chapter, as it goes on more and more, their anxiety of wanting to serve Krishna becomes deeper, more intense and more unbearable for them. There is a kind of transcendental suffering that is like, can be described as a chutney. Here's a, here we go. A chutney is something that is both sweet and sharp in taste. It can be very pungent. When chutneys are made properly, they have a very hot taste and a very sweet taste simultaneously. And therefore, chutneys are so nice that you can't stop eating them, but at the same time, you want to stop. <laughs> It brings about this dichotomy of experiences where something is so nice, but at the same time, it is causing another type of mood to develop some unpleasant, apparent unpleasant things. And as we said, what's unpleasant in the material world 
is highest in the spiritual world. For, for instance, um, in the material world, one of the most sinful activities one can perform is to engage in activities with another lady who is married. In other words, lawless love, this is called lawless love, to have a relationship with a person who is married to another person. But that in the material world is considered to be degrading, sinful, <coughs> and at the same time dangerous. But in the spiritual world, in relationship to Krishna, it's the highest form of spiritual ecstasy that can be experienced. And that's why the gopis are in that category. Apparently, and I'll use that word, apparently, they are married. But their marriage is really a shadow because it's simply there to increase the loving relationship between Krishna and the gopis in a lawless type of mood. In other words, Krishna is dancing with the wives of others or having association with the wives of others. And that is considered to be the highest in the spiritual sense. So only when we understand the principle of love in the spiritual world, which is a lot different, just like gold and iron, Iron is a metal, gold is a metal. One is very base and prolific or profuse, available. And the other one is very, very valuable and very, very rare. So when you look at love in the material world, you compare it to love in the spiritual world, you're like trying to compare gold to iron which you can't do it doesn't compare although we both have the qualities of being a metal in the same way the love of the gopis for krishna in the mood of separation is the highest form of love that is available anywhere and that is personified in the ultimate principle which Srimati radharani <laughs> she is the expert she is the epitome of that love personified. And here, the gopis are saying, your words are full of nectar. Your descriptions of your life and descriptions of your activities, there's nothing higher that we want, that nobody wants. They eradicate all sinful reactions. Anyone who hears them, especially anyone who chants them, they, they get all good fortune. And so at the end, they, they glorify those persons who are the most magnificent, who spread the glories of the Lord, like that. So this verse is both a mood of intense separation for Krishna, but at the same time, a glorification that hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is the way to associate with the Lord. Hmm. Here is the way to associate with the Lord. This is the direct way because on the spiritual platform, the, everything is of the nature of absolute. That means that hearing about the Lord is as good as associating with the Lord. Speaking the glories of the Lord is as good as having his personal association. And giving these, these narrations of Krishna's pastimes and activities to others becomes so such a powerful form of devotion that even the gopis who on the highest level of loving relationship for Krishna are glorifying those persons who spread the glories of the Lord. So they're tasting them and they're also glorifying them, but at the same time, they're also feeling the pain of separation from the Lord. So this verse has a lot of different qualities and these are all broken down by the word for word when you come right into these words. Hmm. 
But these are, this is a very interesting verse. It could be sung nicely. So this really indicates the mood of separation. When we understand bhakti, and we get an idea of what bhakti is like, we understand that bhakti, bhakti's goal is to love Krishna. And to get to loving Krishna, one has to be determined in order to maintain a steady progress towards devotional service. That determination is fortified in a very powerful way by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So when devotees really, you know, there's really no problems in the world. Whatever problems we have are simply due to not hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And that sounds a little, you know, what we say, all inclusive, and it is. <laughs> it's meant to be because when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we are free from all effects of the material energy and we can raise, when that becomes intensified, we can be situated on the platform of devotion. And so the gopis are now experiencing their separation from Krishna by remembering his activities, by remembering his, uh, his, his words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we'll stop there. The Acharyas, Balabhacharya, Sridhar Swami, Srinath Pandit, Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, uh, Narayan Bhatt Goswami, all of them have given commentary on this particular verse. Okay, thank you. So we'll stop there and see if there's any questions. We appreciate the uh, happy Akadasi coming from the school of Bhakti, but we are here in Slovenia and we, our calendar has a slightly different tone to it. We are experiencing the Akadasi tomorrow. So some of us are experiencing it today and some of us tomorrow. So those who are experiencing today, Akadasi is a simply geared to an accelerated program of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for choosing this beautiful verse to speak on today to remind us of how powerful the narration is, the glorification of the Lord is, and tell us that there are no in this material world. We just need to hear and chant the glories of the Lord more. And you also brought out how lovingly and humbly King Pratap Rudra recited this verse to Lord Chaitanya, and the Lord was so much in ecstasy that he embraced. Christian, um, thank you also for pointing out the gopis' love for, for Krishna. Dear devotees, please go ahead and ask your questions or share your realizations uh, with Guru Maharaj and all of us. We will be so grateful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, tomorrow we'll speak about Vrindavan Das Thakur as tomorrow's topic for the uh, class. <laughs> well, if there's no questions, then we can uh, conclude here, but I would suggest everyone take some time 
And uh, chant this verse, it's so sweet. You can chant it over and over and over again. It's as, it's as good as the Maha Mantra. <laughs> Tavakatam ritam tapta jivanam kaviri viritam kamalpasanam kamasapasapaham shravana mangalam srima aptatam bhuvigranati te buri dajanaha. Mm -hmm. Uh, Guru Maharaj, there's a question on the chat, if you would like me to read that out since no one is asking anything so far. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the School of Bhakti and they write that, Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, I heard we need to be pure to make it convincing and effective when speaking of the Lord. So for those of us that are not on that level, is there any uh, is there any limitations for us? Any comments on that, dear Maharaj? The question centers around what? <laughs> uh, oh, it's Bhakta Roberto uh, who's asking this question. He says that, uh, I heard we need to be pure so as to make it convincing and effective when speaking of the Lord. So for those of us that are not on that level, is there any limitations for us? Any comments on that, dear Gurudev? As you, re as you recite these verses and recite the glories of the Lord, you're revealing the nature of, the, of your purity. We don't preach you know, we preach according to audience. So you wouldn't be speaking these pastimes about the gopis to common people. It would be offensive. They would misunderstand and you would go down instead of going up. So, but the general statement by the gopis is your words and your activities are nectar. And people are looking for nectar. So give them the words and activities of the Lord in some form or another, according to the nature of your audience. <clears throat> Krishna's pastimes are on different levels of intimacy, but the basic pastimes we can always talk about. Prabhupada printed Krishna book back in 1970 when the movement was only a few years old. And in that he gave the, a summary of the entire 10th canto in the form of the stories of Krishna's leelas. And that became such a sought after book that the devotees couldn't keep it in stock. As soon as they would stock up, it would sell out. And they, that would continue like that for years. Everyone wanted Krishna book. I think devotees who are in the movement for many years have read it so many times. So there's everything, there's something for everyone in Krishna's name, form, qualities, activities. Om Tat Sat. Yeah, people are looking for nectar, but they're drinking poison and thinking it's nectar. If I have a bottle of, I have a bottle and it says on the bottle, nectar, but it's actually poison, and I drink it, it'll do me harm. 
So that's what people are relabeling the poison bottles with, with the words of nectar on it and trying to find nectar in poison. Therefore, nobody's in the material world is satisfied or happy. But here's the nectar. The activities and words of the Supreme Lord are nectar. Mm -hmm. That's what Prabhupada did. He gave us Krishna's words, Krishna's activities. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, I want to know how to uh, speak the glories of the Lord to common people so that, as you said, they don't misunderstand and they don't become offensive. Lord Chaitanya himself never spoke about these very deep esoteric truths to anyone except very close associates. So how, how we are supposed to uh, speak of the, these pastimes or should we just stick to the childhood pastimes of Krishna? Yeah, something that's understandable. You have to know your audience. Hmm. Generally, we talk, we talk about chanting the holy names. But we can also give them literature with Krishna's pastimes on it, such as Krishna book. The teachings of Lord Chaitanya. These are all the, the activities of the Lord are, are available. Mm -hmm. But people in general, they need something very understandable and not something too, what we say, hard to understand or explain. So you have to understand your audience. For general audiences, we just talk about the glories of, not the glories, we talk about the benefit of chanting Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. When a person becomes more and more interested, then we can give them more and more according to their, uh, you know, active interest. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. <clears throat> Guru Maharaj, um, so uh, we know that uh, uh, Gopi's love is the highest love and uh, um, Krishna's, uh, so in this, in this material world, we see also love here. So um, how to aspire for that Krishna's love, Guru Maharaj, and how to develop that, Guru Maharaj? Uh, how to develop love for Krishna? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Many ways, but one is to hear about Krishna. If, how can you know, how can you develop love if you don't know about any, the person you're trying to love? So when you hear about his activities, his ways of re dealing with his devotees, the way he deals with the non-devotees, the way he deals with material energy, his many his many dynamic qualities, you start learning about the person. Krishna is a person and he's got a personality. His personality is a supreme personality, but that personality is, has certain characteristics and qualities in it. And when you learn about those qualities and characteristics, you become naturally attracted to Krishna because they're pure and all attractive. So just hear about Krishna more and more. And then of course that hearing should naturally lead to service of Krishna. If we're just hearing and we're not service, serving, that means we're not really hearing properly. Hearing has to take the form or has to uh, extend itself into serving Krishna more and more. 
And this is how bhakti is constituted. You hear about Krishna, you serve, and then as you serve, you want to hear more. And as you hear more, you want to serve more. So this, uh, these two things feed each other, the hearing and chanting and the serving are like two forces that give support to each other. Problem is devotees, they, they like to serve, but they don't like to hear. They don't have a taste for hearing. Because we don't have a taste for hearing, we don't know much about Krishna. And because we don't know much about Krishna, we're not attracted enough to Krishna. We may be attracted to Krishna by what he can give us, but we're not attracted to him as a person. That's, that's bhakti, being attracted to him for who he is. Beyond the idea that he's God, he has certain all attractive qualities which make up his character and personality. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, so if now, um, since the beginning, I'm more interested in hearing about Krishna. So I, I listen to a lot of lectures and know about Krishna, try to know about Krishna and uh, hear his pastimes and everything. But uh, sometimes, <clears throat> even though I'm the, in this process, Sometimes I get distracted with this material things also, Guru Maharaj. Like, um, so some something is in the roots are there still. A um, lot of thing is there in my mind, in my heart. So <clears throat> I want to take it down, take it out them permanently. But well, it's a long process. But um, um, I don't know when it will be possible. Or how to? <laughs> I don't well, know. you also have obligations on the material level because you're a mother. You're a you're a wife, you're a mother. So bo both of those things require certain uh, obligations. And therefore, and the activities that go along with being a mother, with being a wife, they can, you know, come into the mind at any time because either things what we have to do and which is what we're doing. So don't be discouraged by that. Just uh, make time for hearing about Krishna, make time for doing your duties on the material level also. also. The idea is not to overlap the times. When you're doing your duties, you can remember Krishna. When you're hearing about Krishna, try to stay focused on that exclusively. If these other things come to your mind, you say, well, later on when I'm done hearing, then I'll, t I'll tend to these other things. Right now it's for Krishna. So you can't stop the mind from jumping onto these other subjects, but you can you can you can continue to continue to hear and chant and just uh, ignore the mind, and then when the time is up, you can go back to your normal duties. You have to give quality time for hearing and chanting. That's the point. <laughs> yes, good, Maharaj. Yeah, the more you become absorbed in it, the sweeter it is. Mm. Like, for instance, um, my schedule got changed. I was doing, after my rounds, I would read Bhagavatam for an hour before moving on to breakfast. So then uh, my doctor told me, well, you got to take breakfast earlier. You're taking breakfast too late. So I was thinking what to do. So I decided, all right, I'll just not hear Bhagavatam at that time. I'll try to put it into another part of the day. And so I tried that, but it wasn't working as effectively because the morning time was perfect for the Bhagavatam. My mind was ready for it and I was eager for it at the same time. And so when I tried to reschedule it, I couldn't. It would be intermittent. So I decided to go back and just go back to the old schedule. And because I did, I'm now I'm reading Bhagavatam regularly and I'm satisfied with that. Although my breakfast may be a little later than my doctor wants me to be. <laughs> but I figured this is nectar and I'm not going to 
Uh, this is also medicine. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, somehow rather sacrifice that just to get into a perfect, you know, schedule for for health, you know. So I, so I had to make that choice, and I, I'm glad I did because now I'm regularly doing my Bhagavatam again at the regular time, and that's the time that's available. And it's the morning time, which is meant for Bhagavatam, because we always have our morning classes around that time. So, yeah, schedule it. <laughs> and yes, that's all you do at that time. <laughs> that's good. Sure, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, if the mind jumps, just turn it off and go back to what you to hearing and chanting. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we can stop here. Uh, Guru Maharaj, there's a question from Namrata on the chat. She said, Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to Guru Maharaj. When we realize that our particular activity that we are doing is under the mode of passion, we cannot sometimes help ourselves because we are at that subtle level and we're used to thinking in that way. So what should we do? Just hear and chant the glories of the Lord. <laughs> and your passion will change into goodness. The process works. It's not like you know, like the materialists, they say, well, we got to do this, so we'll do this. And then we'll have to stop doing this, and they try to stop doing this. But that doesn't work. Best to just hear and chant the glories of the Lord. If you bring in the sun, the darkness goes. <laughs> Um, I'm not able to hear. Devi Mataji, your voice is breaking, Mataji. It's, oh. it's something wrong with the communication system. Hare Krishna, can you hear? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I was asking... Um, Previously, I didn't even used to realize that my activity, whatever activity I'm doing, this is in the mode of uh, passion or ignorance or goodness. But after coming to this process, I have started at least realizing that whatever I'm thinking, oh, this is in the mode of passion. Oh, this is in the mode of goodness. Or oh. So uh, is it? Is it a progress and uh, should I continue that way or should I take some other way? Mm, the process is there here and chant the glories of the Lord. That's all. These things will gradually change. You're changing already slowly, but you're changing and it'll continue to go in the same direction as long as you continue to chant the Hare Krishna mantra here and chant the glories of the Lord and find time throughout your day to do some seva. That's the process. Okay. Be hey, patient. Maharaj. Just be patient. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. I have a lot of things on my plate, but yes, uh, I have to keep patience. Yeah, enjoy hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. It's sweet. It's nectar. And that, and that, when you actually develop a taste for it, then there's no questions of patience anymore. You like to do it. Okay. I do realize a difference in myself, but sometimes, you know. Uh, 
uh, sometimes just uh, uh, things go out of the way and uh, and after some time i don't realize why if i have this understanding why did i do this i mean why did i react in this way <laughs> well you learn you learn from your mistakes yes maharaj but don't make the same mistake again that means you didn't learn yes maharaj definitely mm -hmm. yeah we learn from our mistakes and we learn from hearing from others about what we should do and not do there's two ways of learning learning from mistakes and learning from hearing both can give the learning experience but learning from hearing is is less painful and more direct Yes, Maharaj, this process has helped me a lot and I definitely doesn't, don't want to leave this process. Oh yeah, it's just starting. It's unlimited. If you can imagine uh, unlimited happiness, unlimited knowledge and complete freedom from all material suffering and living a life of eternality, then that's what's included in Krishna consciousness. We're just scratching the surface. We get a little understanding of something better than what we were doing, but that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. It's, uh, yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Vrindavanath Prabhu, please do go ahead with your question. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one very basic and bit odd question. Uh, I hope it's not wrong. Uh, when we wake up uh, and uh, like when we are like busy in morning daily activities, can we listen to lectures, Guru Maharaj? Because it's a good 20, 25 minutes time. Yeah, it's nice. Some devotees listen to lectures, some devotees uh, read Bhagavatam, some devotees chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, some devotees do exercise. <laughs> so when you wake up, you can do a number of things. But yeah, reading or hearing lectures is it's good. Or listening to, you know, if you can have Mongol Arti at home with your families, that's the best. If you're not able to do that, then you can listen to Mongol Arti. You can listen to Tulsi Arti. You can listen to Guru Puja. You can hear classes. But you have to check your rounds in there also. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, like one question is related to that. Like uh, uh, we like just like when in the morning uh, at four thirty, like normally offer the bhoga to a lordship in deity uh, form, and then uh, do. We go for japa directly and then like once japa is done then we do all the artis including even mangal arti is that correct or is this a not good process what we mean the sequence yes guru Maharaj. so like we like rather than doing mangal arti at 4 30 we just offer bhoga at that time and go directly to japa and then japa is finished yeah, over good. then yeah whatever whatever works for you when you're home, you can make your own, you the schedule that works for you the best. You try something, you see how it works, and then you uh, adjust, improve it. Like every day, 
Do we always get some ideas on how to improve our Krishna consciousness or something about our life? Today I got an idea on something. It was more material, but it was helpful. And something I didn't think of, Krishna reminded me of something and I thought, oh, this is nice. So it was a material thing, but it improved the landscape of my, my environment. And that's one thing that it was helpful for. So, you know, continue to chat and you'll get more ideas on, on uh, how to worship the Lord, serve the Lord, glorify the Lord. We can make plans, we can adjust, we can improve, we can increase. Okay, only question, Guru Maharaj, is that like sometimes myself and Ananda Brindavan like discuss this question that we are at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning time. We are chanting this Samsara Dhavan and Vivavari Shesha. So is this like too late? Like because already like is this a long time? That's the only like like doubt in mind, Guru Maharaj. What time do you get up in the morning? Normally around 4 o'clock, Guru Maharaj. So so four o'clock and then take take care of the personal hygiene and then after that then um do your mongolarti then or if you want some practical advice chant four rounds and then do mongolarti and after mongolarti then you can go back to your chanting again for Grihastha, you, you should do you should do at least worship your deity in some respect, perform the Mangalarti, and check your rounds. And here, classes on Srimad Bhagavatam, those are required, all those activities. Mangalarti usually means early. I, I live alone, so what I do is I just play Prabhupada's chanting Mangalarti every day. I hear Prabhupada singing the Mangalarti prayer. But if you're with others, then you can get together as a group and chant. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. That's really, really helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, we can stop here. Thank you very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Lavanya Mataji, tomorrow's topic will be Vrindavan Das Thakur, the life of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Along with, oh, actually tomorrow is Sunday and I am here and it's a codicy for me. Plus I have a temple program just before this one, like I did last Sunday, same schedule. So I'm going to be, no doubt I'm going to be late for the class. I should be there by quarter after the hour. So I would suggest the devotees will, should uh, do something, play, do some kirtan or somebody read something, keep the uh, program going. And I hope to attend no later than 15 minutes after the hour. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for suggesting the Kirtan. We're all missing Kirtan so much. So by your mercy and blessings, tomorrow we'll have some Kirtan. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you.